Clark Gable here, and this pre-calculus lesson is on uh, angles and degree measures. Uh, it's the beginning of trig in pre-calculus, you guys. So let's take care of this board problem here. So we're going to solve uh, square root of x plus 4 equals the square root of 3 plus 2x. Okay, on that one, I'd go ahead and square both sides, and that gets rid of the radicals. And so you get x equals 1. Okay, number 2. Um, uh, this doesn't factor. There's no factors of negative 28 that uh, add to 9. So and because this is odd, you guys, I would definitely use the quadratic formula right here. So using the quadratic formula, just check. Watch the negatives, you guys. I lose them too. Uh, you make some careless errors, but here's my answer. Negative 9 plus or minus square root of 193 all over 2. Okay, and then find the remainder when this polynomial is divided by the binomial x minus 1. Well, there's a couple ways. You can use synthetic division, or you can just do p of 1 into this uh, p of x right here. And then whatever that comes out to, that'll be your remainder. Okay, and since it's not 0, then it is not a factor. So the remainder is 2. Okay, so angle degrees and measures. All right, so an angle with its vertex at the origin. Remember uh, x, y uh, axes here. So the vertex is at the origin. And its initial side, the beginning side, is on the positive x-axis. is said to be in standard position. Okay, I'll show you examples of that in just a second. Uh, Counterclockwise is positive angles and clockwise is negative angles. Okay, so check this out right here. This is an angle where the vertex is at the origin and its initial side is on the x-axis. See, here's another angle where the initial side is on the x-axis. Here's another one where the initial side is on the x-axis. Okay, and if it goes counterclockwise, it's positive. Okay, so this, this would be, this is 90 right here. So a little bit past that would be 120. Um, so if it goes clockwise, it would be a negative 120. Okay, and so this one's a positive 90 right there. Okay, so um, uh, we'll begin uh, using degrees for angle measurements. Later, you guys, we're going to deal with uh, radians. But for now, uh, let's make sure that your calculator are set in radians. We're going to be using radians for this whole chapter, you guys. So if you have your TI-83s, you guys, go ahead and grab that. And uh, press mode, which is uh, towards the top left. Press mode. And then when you press mode, uh, see where it says radian and degrees? It's the third one down. Go ahead and scroll over to degrees and hit enters. If your calculator is in radians, you're going to get all wrong answers. Okay, we'll deal with radians later. Okay, so all the way around the circle is 360 degrees. You probably knew that already. Each degree can be subdivided into 60 equal parts, and they're known as minutes. So one minute is uh, written as one with a little apostrophe right there. Okay, so one sixtieth of a degree equals one minute. Okay, each minute is then subdivided into 60 equal parts known as seconds. So one second is written, is written one with uh, uh, like a quotation marks with two dashes right there. So, so one sixtieth of a minute is equal to uh, one second. Okay, one over 360 of a degree is equal to one second. Okay, because you divide by 60 twice. So change each measure to degrees, minutes, and seconds. Here's number one. Okay, 329.125. What I'm going to first do is multiply... Uh, that 0.125 times 60, that'll tell me how many minutes are in 0.125, and I get 0.7.5 minutes. Okay, then I'm going to take that 0.5 and multiply it times 60 again, that'll tell me how many seconds are in that 0.5, so I get 30 seconds, so it changes to 30, 329 degrees, 7 minutes, and 30 seconds. Okay, try it again. Okay, so I'm going to multiply it by 60 and then take that little de that little leftover decimal again. So uh, 0.735 times 60 is 44.1. Then I take that 0.1, multiply it times 60 again, tells me how many seconds are in there. So 15 degrees, 44 minutes, 60 seconds. So let's work it backwards, you guys. Let's change this to uh, decimals, you guys. So what I'm going to do is multiply by 1 60th uh, for the minutes part and multiply by 1 over 360 for the seconds part. Okay, and that's going to change it to decimal. So uh, 25, and this is basically divided by 60, and then 15 is divided by 3600, and you get uh, that. And so my final answer is 233.421 degrees. Okay, quadrantal angles always land on the axes, you guys. So these are quadrantal angles. They land on the axes. So this would be 90 degrees. Notice this is landing on the x-axis right here. So that the terminal side is on the axes also. So this is negative 180. Uh, I can do also do a positive 180 on that side right there. Okay, just as long as the terminal side is on the axes right here. 270 degrees. Look, here's 90. 
Here's another 90 is 180. Here's another 90 is 270. So 270 degrees. Okay, 360. As long as it lands on the axes, uh, they're called quadratal angles. And a full rotation around the circle is 360s. So give the angle measure represented by each rotation. Okay, so 9.5 rotations clockwise. Okay, clockwise is negative, so I take 9.5 and multiply it by negative 360, and you get negative 3,420. Okay, 6.7. Uh, five rotations counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is positive, so I'm going to multiply that times 360, positive 360, and you should get 2,430 degrees, okay? All right, so two angles in the same standard position, so if they end in the same spot, they're called coterminal angles. So coterminal angles, um, wherever the, the terminal angle is, then you just add and or subtract 360, and that's going to get you some more uh, coterminal angles. I'll show you some examples in just a second, you guys. So identify all angles that are coterminal with each angle. Okay, then identify one positive and one negative angle that are coterminal. Okay, so negative 45. Okay, so negative 45 would be if this is my y axis and this is my x axis, negative 45 would be right down here. Okay, so if that's negative 45, then you're just going to have to, for all of them, you're going to add and subtract 360 degrees. Okay, it said so for all of them, so I'm, that k is some integer, so as long as you, you know, you can keep going around, keep going around, keep going around and around and around, or you can go this way. Here it is right there, plus 360, plus 360. Actually, this I'm going clockwise, so it's minus 360, minus 360, okay? So uh, just take negative 45 plus 360 and negative 45 minus 360, and there's some sample answers right there. Okay, what about this one? Okay, this one again is going to be uh, plus or minus 360K, and so there's your sample answers right there. Okay, reference angles is a non-quadrantal angle. To find, the reference angle is how far your uh, angle is away from the x-axis, and we use reference angles a lot, you guys, so get used to this reference angle right here. Okay, so if it's in quadrant 1, this is my reference angle. If it's in quadrant two, I just want to know how far is it off the, the x or the x axis right there. So whatever this degree measure is right here would be my reference angle. Okay, whatever this little guy right is here right is is my reference angle. Since this is 180 and this is more than 180, then I take whatever this angle is and subtract 180. Over here, this angle is less than 180. So to figure out what's this little reference angle, I do this is 180. So I do 180 minus this angle right here. Okay, over here. Uh, I want to know how far is it off the x-axis, okay? So that's always my reference angle, okay? So 360 is all the way around, so 360 minus whatever this angle is right there would give me my reference angle right there. Okay, so your reference angle is, um, uh, if it's in quadrant 1, then that's the angle when it's in quadrant 1. When it's in quadrant 2, you do 180 minus the angle. When it's in quadrant 3, you do the angle minus 180. When it's in quadrant 4, you do 360 minus the angle, okay? It's, it's easier than that even, you guys. So find the measure of the reference angle. I just like to know, so 120, you guys. I graph 120. There's 120. I just want to know how far is it off the x-axis. That's my reference angle. This is 120 over here. So this is going to be 60 because this is 180. So my reference angle is 60. Okay? How far is it off the, the, the x-axis? Okay, negative 135 goes clockwise. So negative 135. So how far is it off the x-axis right there? This is 180, so this must be 45 degrees right there. Okay, how far is it off the x-axis? That's your reference angle, okay? All right, that's it, you guys.